wonderful crafters, my name's Suzanne from Nonstop Paper Crafts. Welcome back to my craft room. I am really excited to announce another junk journal making event in the Junk Journaling for Everyone Facebook group. We have done a journal making event before and it was a success. People really enjoyed it and got lots out of it. So we thought we'd come back and do another one. So each of the admins and mods from the Facebook group have been putting together different tutorials and um, they're all different stages of the journal making but the idea is, is that by the end of it you should be able to build your own journal. The theme we have gone for this time is an office notebook slash masculine theme so you can of course smash all of those together and have a masculine themed office journal. Um, I'm just going down the office route um, I have got lots of florals and stuff in the papers that I'm using. Um, not to say that uh, a masculine book can't have florals and things, but uh, yeah, this is the route I'm going down. I'm looking more at the office. If you would like to craft along with us, that would obviously be fantastic. I will be putting a playlist of all the videos in the description below so that you can follow along easily. If you are not already part of our Facebook group, I will put that link down below so that you can um, again join that and then once you have created your journal, we would absolutely love to see your pictures. Also in the Facebook group's files, you will find a series of digital papers that each of the admins have been designing. Um, we've all been contributing, so there are loads and loads of papers in there, lots of ephemera and bits and pieces that you can use. I've currently only printed out my base pages, um, but yeah, there are lots of freebies in there for you to help you with your journal making for this particular theme. Okay, so I'm really excited to get started. Let's get on with the tutorial. Okay, so the first tutorial that I'm doing with you today is all about the cover. Now, in the description of the event, we said it was going to be a paper bag cover. There are a few different ways that you can make a cover using a paper bag. There are a few other tutorials out there on YouTube. Um, so if you don't quite like the, how perhaps I'm doing my layout, you are quite welcome to obviously go and have a look for yourself. Um, I have brought a few different types of bags here just to kind of give you some ideas. Um, I am going to be using this bottom one, which is from Typo. Um, it's a shop here in the UK. It's a stationery shop. Um, I'm not sure if they are in any other countries, um, but they do these stunning bags. Now I'm not super close to a typo, I think my nearest one is about 40 minutes away. Um, so any time that I go uh, to the shopping centre where I know where it is, I tend to pick, pick up a few of these bags uh, because I absolutely love them. I love all of the print on there and this is what I'm going to be using today for mine. But before we get started with this, I just wanted to show you some other options um, of making a cover from a paper bag. Okay, so possibly the easiest type of cover to make with a paper bag is using a sandwich bag um, or something very similar. The only thing with these is obviously they are generally quite flimsy, they're not particularly stiff. Uh, there are ways around that, it totally depends on the kind of feel um, that you are going for. Obviously if you don't mind having the soft cover uh, then you are ready to go with this and it is as simple as folding it over okay you will obviously have a thinner um, journal to work with I tend to like to make my journals um, half of an A4 so this is a standard copy of paper I fold it in half this is the size of my journal I generally do that purely because I'm lazy and <laughs> I like the ease of just being able to fold a piece of paper um, and pop it into my journal without having to measure and trim anything uh, sometimes I do still have to do some trimming to make sure everything is even, uh, but generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, this is what I go for. Something that it's just folded in half, an A4 piece of paper, um, and it just makes everything so much simpler. So obviously if I was to fold this in half with my A4 piece of paper while it's tall enough, um, I would have to obviously do some trimming. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, one lovely thing about using these is that you have an instant pocket, so you could leave this open so that you have a pocket. Uh, again, up to you if you want it at the front or if you turned it the other way, you would have the pocket at the back. 
Um, if you did want this a bit thicker, if you feel that this is too thin, um, then I would suggest lining it maybe with some book page or something. So sticking some book page inside just to make it feel a little bit stiffer. Um, if you are keeping this as an open pocket um, and you are lining the inside with book page, the only thing you may want to think about is the orientation of your writing, if that's something that bothers you. Personally, I prefer my writing to be the right size up. So if I was using this as a, um, a cover and I was reinforcing, I would want to make sure that any text was the right way up. But that's just me, that doesn't have to be you. And obviously if you're sealing the whole thing shut anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's an option. Like I said, that's probably the easiest if you have a lunch bag uh, type cover, you're literally just folding it in half and you have an instant cover. Okay, so this is the next style of bag I have. So this is a small gift bag. Um, one thing when you're making journal covers you need to think about is the orientation of things. So this obviously has some beautiful flowers. They do kind of go up. However, if I did want to use this as a journal cover and I folded it in half, it doesn't particularly matter still. There's no writing on it. There's no images that say that it has to be going this way. Um, so this wouldn't bother me too much. I'd be quite happy to use this as a journal cover um, and have the flowers like that. Okay, so you can, just like the sandwich bag, use this as a journal where you are folding in half. Um, you can, of course, remove the handles. You may decide to use those as a bit of a feature. Um, so if I had them to the back, for instance, uh, you may want to lose maybe the front one, so I'll just tuck it in for now. So you've just got the back one, and then when it closes, you could put a button or something here, and then that could become part of your closure. Um, obviously, the only thing you have to bear in mind is this isn't obviously stretchy or flexible like an elastic. Um, so if your journal starts growing, then you've obviously got to think about that with your closure. So that is an option. You don't have to use it as a closure. You can get rid of both handles if you like. Um, and just have it like that. Again, you've got that instant pocket because it's open. Uh, the nice thing with these gift bags is they are much more sturdier, so you don't necessarily have to reinforce anything. Um, so yeah, you can have this open as a pocket if you wish, um, or seal it up again if you don't. Uh, you also have this part here where it folds at the end. Now again, you could use that if you were just to glue the top and the bottom, you now have an instant pocket and tuck spot in there. Uh, again, you could have that at the front, so as you open the front cover you've got a tuck spot, or if you were to have it the other way around it would then be at the back, and then you've got this big pocket at the front. So that again is another option. Again, very simple because you're just taking a bag, folding in half, like I said, maybe removing the handles if they're not something you want to use, um, and then you've got instant pocket, and an instant pocket here where it opens. Okay, so nice and easy, and you wouldn't have to do a great deal of decorating to this um, if you have something that already has a lovely pattern on like that, um, because it's already done for you. Okay, so the next option is the one that I am using. So this is the bag that I'm going to be using for my front cover. Um, the only thing I obviously need to take into account is the orientation of everything. So I can't just fold it in half this way because, as I said, me just being me, it may not bother you. I don't like it that the writing and the images are sideways. This bothers me. Um, so mine will have to be this way. Now, depending on the size bag that you have at home, if you're following along, um, this one... The, essentially the width of the journal is going to be half of this and so this will eventually fold over this way. Um, I have made a prototype and once this is all folded it's the perfect size for this A4 sheet folded in half and I'll give you the sizes of this bag. So it is 12 and a half inches wide this bag and it is 16 and a half inches tall. So this is a big bag. Uh, the way that I'm going to make my journal cover, you can do with any size bag, but it will obviously affect the size of the paper that you put inside. So to show you what I mean by that, 
Uh, this is their medium size bag. I also have these great big whoppers, uh, which are absolutely huge. This is a massive size. And originally I was going to use that really big bag, but I'll show you what I mean by it affects the size. So this one is this folded. So as you can see, it will be a quarter um, of this. And this fits in quite nicely um, an A4 piece of paper. It fits in perfectly to the side. I have a tiny, tiny bit of trimming to do at the top, but then if your printer prints with a border anyway, a white border, then that wouldn't be a problem. Um, so yeah, so this is a perfect size. The larger bag gives me more of a square. Um, so obviously that wouldn't be any good for my A4 piece of paper because once it's inside, while it's tall enough, I'm obviously going to have this massive gap towards the end. I can of course do some trimming, but when you see the inside, um, you'll know why I can't do that. So if I give you a little bit of a sneak peek inside, we've got two flaps here. Um, you've got a big pocket here. You've also got a big pocket at the back. So if I'm trimming off the sides, that's going to affect my pockets, um, which is why I can't do that. So I will show you how to make this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the handles. I do not need the handles for this particular make. So I'm going to cut those out. Okay, so that's got, gotten rid of my handles. I'm then going to flip it over and I'm going to cut along where we've got this bottom bit here. I'm going to cut along this edge and this edge, okay? Okay, so you should now have this part loose, okay? We want to remove this whole top section. So I'm going to carefully cut along this edge and along this edge so that this top section comes off. Okay, so you should now have a bag that looks like this. Now, if your bag that you are using has a print on both sides that you're happy to use as your front cover, then you don't need to do this next step. Because I have nothing here apart from typo, this is what I want to be my front cover. I am going to just flip this, because at the moment, I've got it this way. I need this showing on the other side. So I'm literally just going to fold it the other way. Okay, as I said, if you had the print on the back, you don't need to worry about that part. I just need to do that because I haven't got a print on that side. So I'm just making sure that it's all reasonably level. And fold it over. Okay, so once we've done that, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold this up. Now the problem that I had last time I did this is I put this right to the top which is why I think it's not giving me the height that I need for my A4 sheet. So to try and eliminate some of the trimming, because I don't like trimming, um, I'm just going to move this a little bit lower. I also think it makes it a little bit clearer that this is a pocket. So I'm going to bring it down so I've got a little bit of a gap at the top. I hope you can see that. Yep, so there's a bit of a gap at the top. Uh, not much, about I think a centimetre. I'm not sure how much that is in inches. Um, and then I'm just going to give it a nice fold there and push down. Uh, 
okay and then obviously this is going to be our inside and this is going to give us a nice big pocket here obviously your signature will be sewn down here so it means you've got two pockets one this side one that side and then the same here you'll have one this side and one that side right to reduce some of the bulk because it is quite thick at the moment um, we're going to pull this down uh, and now I'm going to remove this section so it's just this back panel so not this bit not the sides just this panel here and I'm going to come just past my fold line so just past my fold line and cutting up this edge just to get rid of this top panel of paper and then we can reuse this for other parts of our journal uh, if we wish to so I'm just going to cut that bit now Okay, so that's that piece removed. As you can see, I went just slightly, that's where I folded it, so I've just gone slightly past there. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not super neat, because you're not going to see that bit, because this bit gets folded up here, but it just reduces some of that bulk where that fold is, and then that's going to come up here, and then that's how it's going to look. Um, now we are going to cut the flap. So again, I'm gonna come just underneath the fold, and I'm going to cut along here so that these can be pulled out. Okay, so this now folds completely out. The next thing I'm going to do is, I've just done this again just to reduce the bulk, but I am going to cut up slightly um, so that obviously when this folds, it's not going to keep catching. So I am going to um, just trim that. Okay, so if you can see what I've done there, I've just gone in slightly above here and then just cut straight along so that as this comes over, it's not right down at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, so again, now that I fold this over, it's not completely on the bottom. I do have a bit of a gap there, okay? And then these bits will fold over there. Right, the next thing we're going to do then is fold all of this in half. And then this will be the base of our journal cover. So I'm just checking. That is all straight. Excellent. Okay, now you may find that obviously where you're trying to pull your flaps over, um, there isn't a lot of space here um, where this obviously then starts to stick out. So you can obviously just push this flap back a little bit so that the crease starts a little bit further back and that should stop it um, from bowing okay but that is essentially the cover done and then just to check here's my a4 piece of paper folded in half and you can see that it actually fits really well now that I've adjusted the inside um, it actually fits within the journal uh, so before the last time I put this pocket right to the top so that obviously then made it shorter which meant that this was poking out but now my signature is going to fit in quite nicely 
Now the thing I love most about this style of cover is that you can adapt and change however you like. Um, for instance, you may not want these flaps, you may think that they're useless um, and you may just want to cut them off completely, that's absolutely fine. Um, you may decide, um, depending on whether you sew or stick, but you may decide to glue or sew all the way up there so that this is a closed pocket, it doesn't sort of flap open like it does at the moment. I mean obviously you've got to remember your signature will be sewed in so it will only open to the side a little bit. But if you don't want that, like I said, stick or glue all the way down. Uh, the thing that bugs me, like I said, it's this orientation. So I will be covering this bottom section. I obviously don't want to cover my pockets. I do want access to my pockets. But I will be covering this bottom piece because I don't like that the images are upside down. Um, I will also be keeping these flaps. Um, something that I've thought about that I would quite like. Uh, is a row of pockets. Uh, now I know there is a Tim Holtz die uh, that does this, I do not have that. Um, so all I did is the bits that we've been cutting off here, um, I've literally just cut a strip that I know fits on here. Um, I've just used a, a cutting knife and I've just cut my slits in and I'm going to put that here. That one makes this a bit more sturdy um, but it also gives me some nice office style pockets so that's going to go in there I may round the corners yet um, I am going to sew my cover uh, so I'm going to do some sewing around mine as well um, I may also because I know a pen holder is something that Michelle is doing um, fold one of these over and have one of them where my pen can clip onto so all different variations that I am thinking of um, as I say, this is now the base of the journal cover um, and yeah, it'll be really fun to see how you guys decorate this um, or how you change up the layout. But yeah, I am looking forward now to starting to decorate this a little bit further and to also make a start on my signatures. Okay, so that is the cover made for the journal using a paper bag. I absolutely love um, the images on here, this typo bag. And like I said, I love that it's so adaptable um, and all the things that you can add to it. Uh, in a future video, I will of course come back and I'll show you the changes that I have um, made to this. Um, I've only just started putting things together for it, so I'm not entirely sure, or I haven't finally settled on exactly what the layout's going to be. Um, uh, yeah, so I, what, I will come back and I will show you exactly what I've done on the inside with the flaps and things. But I just wanted to give you some ideas of how you could make a cover using a paper bag. Well, hopefully you've had some good ideas today and you have been inspired um, of how you can make your own paper bag journal. As I say, the playlist for all the other videos will be listed down below. Um, we'll be showing you different stages of the journal making. Um, and as I say, I'll be giving you updates on how my journal is coming along as well. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day. See you later now, bye bye.